In this video, I have very interesting topic of Angular framework, which is life cycle hook. Personally, this is my favorite topic, not just because it enables you to understand how Angular framework process the component, but if you understand it thoroughly, you can bring some code optimization. You will start to think how I can rewrite code more efficiently and ultimately you can bring some performance optimization in your application. So the motive of this video is to know what is the lifecycle hook, what are different lifecycle hook, what is the order of execution between them and to understand why that order is so and so way I have very interesting simple and short example. I have created a simple application through which I'll be demonstrating you that how it is processed and depending on the changes happening in the components, how different hooks get triggered. So a component in Angular has a life cycle, a number of different phases it goes through from birth to the death. We can hook into those different phases to get a, some pretty fine control of our application. And to get that pretty fine control of our application, we need to have some specific methods present in our component class. And that methods are called as life cycle phases. And we also call them as a method hooks. To have those method hooks, you also need to implement specific interfaces. As you can see here, these are the total lifecycle hooks we have here. It starts from the constructor and at the end we have ng on destroy. Now the blue one is the constructor and since it is a constructor provided by the TypeScript, it has to get executed at first. Then the pink one that you are seeing, those are specific to our component and that are executed in the order shown there. The yellow ones are more related to the child component if you have in your application and that deals with how the flow of control should be there with a child component changes happening. Now I will walk you through each of them. First constructor. So constructor is invoked whenever we create any new instance of component or directive using a new keyword that time it is invoked ng on changes so it is invoked every time there is a change in one of the input properties of the component if it is there it will get invoked there then we have ng on in it which is invoked when the component has been initialized so this hook is always called once after the first on changes and it is practice that we use that whatever we have to like do some data transformation or data fetch operation we put them in the on in it ng do check it is invoked when the change detector of the given component is invoked it allows us to implement our own change detection algorithm for the given component so to give you an idea there is a change detection mechanism present in the angular and if you do that change detection at some point then this is the thing that you can customize if you want to have your custom logic there if you want to define a custom behavior you can do all the stuff in the ng do check now it is important to know here that ng do check and ng on changes should not be implemented together in the same component because it's not absolutely necessary you are not going to land in a situation where you will have uh, both things there basically you can do the things in either one of it then we have ng on destroy. This is the method will be invoked just before Angular destroys the component. And usually we use this hook method to unsubscribe from the observable. If we have some memory cleaning operation, so we detach the event handlers and whatever we want to do, like unsubscribe or the cleaning the resources, those things we can do in the ng on destroy. Now these are the special types of hooks that you see here that are for the uh, components children these hooks are only called for the components and not for the directives now what is the difference between components and directives now this is another interesting topic to understand but for now to put it simple directive don't have a template where your components must need to have a template that's a very simple line I would say so yeah ng after content in it this is invoked after angular performs any content projection into an angular so content projection where the components transfer the data from one component to another data is getting passed so if you have to do some custom behavior implementation you can get into after content in it ng after content checked invoked each time the content of q component has been checked by the change detection mechanism so now this is same as ng after content in it but 
you can see an additional thing there that this is checked by the change detection mechanism of angular so when you have that change detection mechanism trigger that time only your after content checked will be invoked let's move to our code and see the things happening practically so what i have here in my heroes component i have specified all my hooks here as you can see here and i just put the console log there to understand whenever i'll be doing some changes into my components whether it is injecting some data or doing some internal changes i want to see that how it is behaving and what is the order of execution so for that purpose i put this console log here so that i can see the behavior happening there so uh, i have these things in my uh, component now next thing what i want to do is i want to create an hero list component and as you can see that i have put uh, my uh, command line options here that my module will be app module i don't need a test cases i want inline styles and inline template i will hit enter and will wait for it to create a new component so i can see it has created a new component now in the heroes lit i need to specify that uh, code where I will be passing the data of my heroes list to my hero component so that it can render it here um, Here I will Simply copy it and put it here and you can see that what I did here. I have very uh, simple template in which I have uh, a tag hero that I'm referring to this hero component. This is my selector of hero component. I'm passing my uh, individual variables here using ng form to that component and uh, then I want the name and superpower of that component to be rendered. Below that I have two functionalities which is add and clear. So when I will click on add I want a new entry to be added in that list. When I'll click on the clear I just want to simply empty the list that I have. So this is the data that I maintain and whenever I'm adding a new I'm adding a random value from my data into my list and whenever I'm deleting I'm just simply emptying it. Now as you can see here that what I did here I'm passing a data from my parent component to child using this directive over here which is my property directive hero and I'm specifying the value for it. And uh, there's another thing that I also did that when I'm passing the specific properties of it, I want it to be rendered in this way. Like I want to render only a name and superpower attributes of my this object. So for that, I'm using an ng content, which is the application of content projection. Whatever data I got from my parent component that I can. Uh, Customized in the way I want to show it on my UI. So for that I'm using an ng content markup here Okay, so uh, that's it here. I think and uh, Now I want to check whether it's building properly. Yeah, it is I will jump to my Browser and see there that if I click on add heroes It has added a new entry here and as you can see that in the console I have the console logs that I put so as you can see first thing it is going inside a constructor as I was saying the type scripts constructor is invoked first and it don't have access to the data that I pass from the heroes list that's why it is saying the data is undefined. Then it is going to on changes and it is saying data is changed and the current data is this object that I received and then it has gone to the ng on it and then it is also have access to a data then it went to a do check then after content in it okay so i will clear the console now and want to show you one thing that it is not just for your parent to child if you are passing a data and changes happening your component but if you are doing some internal changes in component like in this case if i click on the tell me it will tell what is the superpower of my component so it is just simply telling me it simply showing me a string over there which i said the visibility using the hide as you can see here that i have the hidden attribute here and uh, that i'm uh, deciding on the basis of what flag i have for my record so if i click on that tell me you can see that it's telling me what is the superpower and in the console that i have ng do check after content check after 
view check to check and after content check and ng after view check this hooks executed so this means that whenever i'm doing some internal changes there is a angular change detection mechanism and whenever that takes place it hand over the control to my hooks and if i have to do some customization over there i can do that now knowing all those hooks question come to mind that uh, do I always need to implement them? The answer is no, you don't need to implement all of them and it's hardly necessary. If you have a specific and very complicated scenarios where you need to do some logic, if you have to trigger something or you add your custom behavior, if there is a change detection happening and after that you want to bring something you can do that that's why angular framework has provided them but it's not absolutely necessary but i will tell you that uh, there are some hooks that are more common and are used across all the projects first is ng on init this is used more often and this is a place where we put all our initialization logic for our component it is preferred over initializing via constructor because as we just saw that if we put some code in the constructor constructor don't have access to the input properties that are being injected by some other components so we prefer to put them into an on init and it is the area where we fetch the data and uh, it is available to be uh, bound to the view at later point then the second is ng on changes is the second most common hook this is the place where uh, we can find the details about the input properties that have changed and what is the change and if you want to do something in our component if something has changed we can add that additional behavior here the third most common hook is ng on destroy which is the place where we do the cleaning up activities cleaning up logic that's all for this video and uh, i hope you may find this helpful thank you